Yeah. Hi everybody. How's it going? Great. My name's Lenore, for anyone who can't see me behind this poster. My name's Lenore, I'm one of the many folks working this weekend to bring some awesome music and arts and poetry uh, to you this weekend. Thanks for coming to the Salt Shaker Festival. We've got so many different components of the festival this weekend to, to mention. Um, I'll talk about the wonderful act that's going to be starting shortly. But we also are gathered here on Treaty 6 territory, very grateful to be here, and something for us all to keep in mind when we're working and celebrating in the arts together here in Manitou. So we're very proud of that and grateful to be here. We also have a support crew that's on site at all of our shows this weekend. Um, I think there's a few folks around. You can see them waving. There's some in the back there. There's a white shirt with a with the red cross, first kind of like a first aid symbol. So if there's anything you need at any point, whether you need first aid, or if you're feeling uncomfortable, or need support, or if you maybe drink too much, or a whole plethora of things, or maybe if you see somebody who might need support, please feel free to go talk to those people and they can help you out as best they can. So that's a, that's a service that they're providing here as a volunteer service, and that's here for everyone to make us all have a safe, fun time. Um, I'd also like to give a big thank you to Sarah McKen and Clayton. Um, this is their space that we're on right now, and they've been just so wonderful and accommodating, and so we're so glad to be doing this tonight. We have, yeah, there's food and drink for sale in this uh, space right over here. There's also a lot of wonderful artworks throughout all these different places, so really encourage you to explore. That's what Sarah always says to me when I come. And have a look at all the wonderful things made by different artisans here. There's lots to, lots to check out and take home with you and purchase if you're interested. We have four acts tonight. Um, we have our first act, and very, very excited to have Peace Akintade here from Saskatoon, accompanied by Ezra Harvey. Peace is a spoken word poet. Yeah, I think a lot of us know Peace and know what we're getting ourselves into. <laughs> Peace is a wonderful spoken word poet who recently, in 2020, 2021, just finished a Saskatchewan Youth Poet Laureate uh, position or term, which is wonderful. Congrats to that. Um, I've been fortunate to cross paths with Peace in various different jobs in the arts, and I'm just really looking forward to continuing getting to know you. We're so glad to have you. Ezra Harvey also, who is a powerhouse in many ways, uh, accompanying Peace tonight. So I'll get off the stage and we can get the night going. Thank you so much. Also, a big shout out to Barrett Ross, who's doing all the sound for all the shows, <laughs> all night, all weekend. So thanks for coming, and uh, I hope I didn't forget anything. Have fun. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, before I usually start, I'd like to do a little introduction, you can call it banter if you will. Um, and it's just me getting to know the vibe, know the energy of the crowd, you know. Some people like some like trauma-induced poetry, they just like to feel hurt. And some people <laughs> really like laughter and want to be happy. Um, the poems that I have for you today is pretty happy. I guess pretty like uplifting, motivational, TED talk kind of way. Um, but I think that this is like the right vibe for it. So first of all, I kind of want everybody to just like rub their hands. It's like a nice rubbing sound. Yeah. Okay, let's get some snaps going. Some snaps. Has anyone really been to like a, a poetry show, a spoken word slam, raising your hands, nodding your head? Good job. Everyone who has not, wow. <laughs> I'm gonna be your first. <laughs> Woo, good for you. And also get on it. It's like a really cool avenue that is like really gaining traction right now, mostly with youths because you know the world is dying and poetry is a way to showcase um, how the world is dying, but from a, <laughs> from a good standpoint and a healthy standpoint. And so I, I really encourage it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. I'm an interdisciplinary poet, uh, so that means that I do poetry with different kind of things, you know. Last year I was doing like a whole bunch of like theater and poetry kind of thing, and then the year before I was doing 
poetry and dance and lyrical dance who had like dancers just like breaking down doing break dances and I'm like spitting rhymes it was great <laughs> that was my best era um, and then I had puppetry uh, for one of it where we had puppets do it and this year I was like oh, I really love music let's have music um, so to accompany me today <laughs> it's a very lovely <laughs> Ezra <laughs> yay <laughs> um, Ezra is going to also be playing after so think of me as an opening act um, to the great uh, Ezra. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, I think I need to think of anything else. No, I don't have anything else. Okay, let's go, peace. Sure. Um, before we start, I always like to do this tradition because I'm from Africa and Africa is, uh, or Nigeria, Yoruba land, is known as a land of storytelling. Um, so if you ever visit Nigeria for some reason, <laughs> and you ever go to Yoruba, and in specifically you go to my village for some, wow, <laughs> FBI, um, you, can, <laughs> you can come into the circle and you can witness some storytelling. And the way they always start the story is by saying story, 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 and everybody else says time, time, time. So even though I'm doing poetry, I still like to keep that tradition because it, it brings us all together, you know? We all need a little, a little togetherness in our life to all be in unison for once. Um, story, story, story. Story, story, story. Story, story, story. Row away that troubling time. Row, row those troubling mind. The sun sings of wonderful tribes, praising those with golden hooves. Who are you, humans? Who are you? Who is me in this destructive expression of life? Of life. Understandably, I haven't talked about fantasies in a while. Maybe since the world doesn't stay still for the meek, and I am too humble to be still. Or is it the masters telling the slaves to go back to the factory mill? I am both the master and slave in this soul-trained miracle called life. It's a soul-trained miracle called life. A soul-trained massacre calling for revolutions in bedrooms and bars. Tell me how the witches birthed you from linens and mandarin fruits from wives crying to be free, from the long and stares of same-sex lovers, from loving you, loving me, from the dew of a tangerine leaf. Tell me how you became voodoo daughter. Burn out, voodoo daughter, burn out. The voodoo daughter speaks in anthems that begin with forgive me. Forgive me for the tired glances I give you, my lover. Forgive me for the anger that prevents our time together. Dark magic calls for me and I must begin my revolution. The river calls for you. The birds, they call for you. It's a soul train massacre, a soul train massacre called life. And I haven't talked about fantasies in a while, have been working too much. Voodoo mother calls for me, but I've been working too much. When can I breathe again? When the daisies sing a lullaby, yes, the trees, they miss me and I've been working too much. It's a soul train massacre calling for the poets. Burn out, voodoo daughter. The river calls for you. Amanashileku. I am the master of voodoo daughter cries, and she cries to be free, to learn the dark magic of words to learn to never burn out, to begin revolutions with fists raised high. The child that kills the river calls for you. 
Will you answer? Will I answer? Amonashi leku. Thank you. <laughs> um, so that's a it's a it's a fairly it's a fairly new one that I created, and uh, it's for a series that I'm doing a series of poems that will eventually turn into a manuscript that might eventually turn into a book. But it's called Voodoo Daughter, and the aspect of it is really trying to touch into the traditional way of storytelling, you know? Going in and out of media, you know, sometimes speaking, sometimes singing, sometimes putting them together, calling for nature, calling for birds. Did you hear the birds singing? <laughs> that was amazing. Usually I need a track for that, but that just happened. I think that's a blessing. Um, and so now I'm gonna go into more like traditional spoken word pieces that I've done, but I wanted to give a touch of, of who I am. I am. I am the voodoo daughter, you know? The one who works too much and never learned dark magic. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Also, if you like a lie, I know you're trying to be like, ooh, quiet, ooh, I'm still, oh my God, I'm in a trance. Um, but it's nice to have like vocal validation. Validation is quite nice to me. So if you have a line that you like, this one is, it's very much like, oh yeah, you will know when to be like, woo. <laughs> and the vocals can like snap at some lines. You can do like a woo, you can do like a ah. You can do a cheesecake sound. You know, when you see a nice piece of juicy, big cheesecake, you can go like a mmm, <laughs> like a mmm, like a deep from the goats. You know, I, I love that sound. I, go, I can like fall on my knees when I hear that sound. <laughs> what am I saying? We're gonna, we're gonna keep going. Um, this one is called BIPOC Wonders, and it was a poem that I wrote back in 2020 when the height of Black Lives Matter was going on. And so many people were like, you know, they were calling on me like, please, write an inspirational poem about being black. <laughs> and then when I was thinking, I was like, well, what do you want me to say? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> police brutality. Ooh, <laughs> let's dance. So I was like, no, let's take a different approach. Let's talk about, you know, black love. Let's talk about black joy. Let's talk about black women. <laughs> let's talk about black people, you know, and let's enjoy it. Uh, so this one's called BIPOC Wonders, and it's about black people dancing. Okay. Black girl dance. Black girl dance. For mothers and love. Mothers wanting beauty in their daughters. Mothers wanting protection in their son. Come on, black mothers. African hands grazing beautiful eye with golden ooze and the sun's feathered kisses. Oh, joy, black girl magic, cry. Black girl sadness, sing. Black girl forgiveness and forgive those that have no reason to love you. But you know love, you know your reason for love. Love to you is, well, it's, mm, it's your hips and the way it stands back and forth like a trustworthy snake. Your arms, built with butterfly wings, flutter by with endurance. Your lips, oh, every word adorned by gods. Tell me you do not know black love when looking at a black woman. And you are home. Love is home and you are home. Thank you for this home and you are home. Love is home and you are home. Thank you for this home. So do not be quiet, black voices. My mother always told me, remember the daughter of whom you are. And I never realized the voice of my ancestors were closer to my ear, voice, and knee. So I kneel for my fallen ancestors. So for them, I will raise a nation of still empowerment, a dysorphia of whisperings and hums. We are nature's playlist repeating propaganda. Let the wind pick and choose our roots. Let the rocks carry and shiver with the soft tremble of your voice. Slowly begin a revolution in bedrooms and bars, sing black artists.
dances, your arms sway with each rise of music, sway your skirts of neon leather in hoop, hair twisted link into one, circle around your enemies and cry. Cry in minor C and scream in D, your body eclipsed and frozen, an unneeding rhythm of desperation, cultivated culture could be so sweet after midnight. Become power, black ancestors. Sit on the shoulders of youngsters, whispering the right answers to their years. Comfort mothers stirring watery soup for dinners. Fathers struggling to be available. Black children playing, be our strength, black ancestors. Remind us of better days. You are the scent of jollof rice following us to work. The coconut oil trapped between our fingers, the heart pounding galas and rappers, festivals, backyard parties, late night drives, close friends, upscale galas and more than hangovers remind us of love and stillness, remind us of normality that we are more than our skin, succeed Black wonders succeed to avenge the fallen generation. Black wonders become heroes. Do not forget the satisfaction of finishing your work. Continue, black wonders. Continue to make life understand your brilliance, the intelligence of your language. Rob your success in cream pies. Smolder your victories and serve them cold to your doubters. Survive, black children under the gazes of torturous majesties who watch you fail, fall, and surrender. Hold your head higher than your oppressor. Shine your skin to the sky like a badge. Understand, black elders, we are the world's afterthought, but heaven's imagination. Thank you. like doing that one. It makes me feel like, mm, yeah, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Woo, thank you. Stop. Oh my gosh. Every single time I always get, every time I'm on stage, people that have seen me do stage things before, you will know. There's always a single tick that I do. And it's either, woo, or it's either like a, a hoo, or I do like a, like a something that I keep repeating and I'm trying to catch myself. And I don't know why I told you that, but I want us to feel like friends and friends overshare. <laughs> so we're now friends. Um, <laughs> this uh, next one that I did is a pretty fun one. It's, um, I like to personalize things. Um, I like to give human qualities to items, you know, because when you're a child and no one wants to play with you on the playground, you pick up a rock and you say, you're my friend now. <laughs> and so you do human qualities for them. And I guess that just like formulated into the way that I write. Because now I, I look at a person and I'm like, you're a creek. You're a fireplace. Hmm, you're a volcano. And they get it, and I get it, and it works. So if you have a child, give them a rock as a pet. <laughs> they, they might become a huge artist in the future. Um, so this one I called an ode to Sunday, and it was during COVID, like the height of it, where everybody was like staying indoors. And I started to like really miss weekends because everything was just like one full day and you can never like appreciate a weekend because it was just another monday so i i did a poem about sunday because it's actually one of my favorite um weekdays yeah okay <laughs> <Mess with it. laughs> we always knew sunday brought the good in us reminded us of black churches where kisses were mandatory Chocolate velvet voices could seduce angels, and stewed chicken was God's work. When can my burden say hello to religion? On Sunday. Sunday is smoking after a warm day of lying. It's an arrested day of questioning and answering yourself. We knew Sundays were quiet time, to rethink the week's confession and forgive our tongue for murder to argue with our insecurities and hold them in a closet. To love is to hide, to hide is to say, I see you. A day to let my skin develop bumps and my hair to grow nappy. A day to miss schoolwork and finish ice cream bars 
a day to drink out of mason jars and pretend you are just lazy. Lazily is the cheek. Lazily and unimportant. Unimportant in the sense that you owe no one anything. You are your own person. You are Sunday. We always knew we would fall in love with Sunday. Just like falling in love with our kindergarten teachers. Wishing to grow up like them or to marry them. Kindergarten teachers taught us how to hold hands, to love our neighbors as friends. They taught me the nooks and morals that strawberry blonde hair was not the epitome of beauty. She taught me to enjoy afternoon naps surrounded by library books, that the warmest places were in the corners of rooms. Do you remember how she told us the Lord's Prayer? By giving us pecks on the cheeks every time we said it right. Butterfly kisses that made us fall in love. Sunday kisses that made us fall in love. If Sunday was a painting, it would be stained in barbecue sauce, given to kids as birthday decorations, or passed on as basement persons. Sunday would be a beautiful mess, our mess, the mess that makes us humans. Abstract mess, our mess, the mess that makes us humans. It would be our childhood best friend, who we've been married to for 18 years, Fall in love with me, Sunday. Fall in love with me again. Tell me what you see in me. Hide me from the weak stairs. Thank you. Uh, just a nice, cute one, you know, to, to put the energy really soft and sweet and good and nice, you know, so I can just uh, rub it off. Uh, this next one is called Bikepack. <laughs> disasters and this was when um, I went to Nigeria back after 10 years I haven't been back in a while and I, I went to my village and I just found out that they just removed a whole land of like you know like historical buildings so that they can build a 30 feet feet long church just whole land of history and people and people that have been there since like ancient days, you know, when anthropologists were still there. These were elders that used to live in the, in the underneath of trees. They would build houses underneath huge trees, all of them just white up clean. And that angered me. But I didn't know why it angered me. Because I, uh, I live in Canada. It's literally the definition of exactly what's going on. But it was something that, that it, it, it set something in me, where I, I started to think that how much of my culture do I need to preserve for the next generation? And so, and so, and so this is why I do this. Come on stage like this and do a really good job at this. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Validation. <Woo. laughs> um, so this is called Bipoc Disasters and it's really my anger towards the situation. So um, I hope you enjoyed uh, a little look into my anger. Stop, this is super serious. Stop, okay. <clears throat> if you tell a rooster his crow can lift the sun and the stumps of his beak saves a nation, soon he becomes ruler of the chicken and the ants. Soon he pecks the ground with drunken power as if its goodness is merited by destruction. If you tell a rooster his wings rotate the earth, soon he becomes God, his existence contrived by our tongue. And my people, are we the rooster or the tongue? Skin black and angry shall no more hide the power of the sun. The villagers shall rebuild the worship stones of the dead dance backwards towards the talking drum tell tales of the rooster to warn their children of the power of their name the beat of the talking drum cries for revolution must our callan's hands build thrones for honored nations be bound together for chains for others and laughter grows louder to silence the rooster's rant 
The rooster pecks the ground, mimicking the drums. Do not let the world deceive you. We were once the tongue, professing others as powerful. Now we are the rooster, scraping for encouragement, content in flapping our wings, believing we rotate the earth. My people, we are both the rooster and the tongue, the prophecy and the prophet. Cutting off our tongue makes the strong, the beak stronger. The poet sits by the hangman tree, trying to describe the vision before her. How do you describe death and nature grieving for our angels? Skin black and swollen, slumped over the worship altar. Skin black and swollen, burned by privileged hands. Skin black and beautiful, mistaken for suicide. The rooster balances her beak between a full belly and gasping cries to nature. She spews curses on our mistaken freedom. She wants anger to rumble and enter the years of guilty men. The beat of the talking drum cries for revolution. And soon the croak of frogs mimic police officers. The crickets die on their power lines. The innocence of youths are killed for free parking tickets. Their innocence remained as parking tickets. And there is blood in the washcloth white stains on the sand hills and the masters are betrayed by the silence of their workers our voices shall no more speak blessing on a nation that believes they succeeded the country of skyscrapers will be desolate as the children of nature whisper hate to the world the power was always the rooster stop and listen Listen and hear, hear their cries. Do not mistake our smiles. The rooster was not born to make you comfortable. And as we stand on the ashes of our ancestors, will we have the courage to sing about power? Will we then know of our bleeding mouth full of lies and false words given to us by the businessman? When our song becomes razors, cutting at our throats, will we then rap about abolition, sweet, loud abolition? When our hands start to shake from the burdens of raising so-called criminals for the prison regime, will we then shout about abolition, sweet, raw abolition? When the world slits our tongue, for token black trophies. Will we then be abolition? Sweet, long abolition. Yes, amen. Yes, and amen. Amen, amen, amen. Up a little rub in the heart because sometimes I feel like you know after I do that poem usually there's always one two three four five um, that come up to me and we talk and have deep conversations and sometimes I just need to remind that it's okay you can take things lightly let it flow through you warm you up and go out you know and uh, that's the beauty of poetry and spoken word. You are welcome for those that haven't <laughs> gone to one before. <laughs> welcome. Um, this is my last poem. Aww. It's okay, guys. You can say aww. <laughs> um, but I really am just an opponent. So you are in for a treat. Um, so your, your emotions are still going to go way up high. So you are all ready and set. I have warmed you up. Um, this last one is just a nice, sweet, really pretty one. And it's about love. And it's about nature. And it's about love in nature. And also love in your lovers. But they don't really understand that you love them. Because they don't understand love. Um, it's a really sweet one, I promise. I'm just describing it very weird. Um, it's called, You Will Be Fine. So thank you. <laughs> 
The sun hums to wake you up slowly while we enclose ourselves in blankets made of smiles. Stay enclosed in this safety forever or at least until the moon screams. No one wakes you with tender cheerings anymore. You rely on nature to rock you slowly away from deep sleep. You rely on the trees to tickle you gently away from deep sleep. Why, my love, do you stretch lazily in bed, filling up the empty crenaces in your bones? Stay, watching the murder of crows gossip your imperfections to no one. You laugh roughly at the sight of them. Why, my love, do you only believe them? I whisper sweet hums to you each night by going on coffee dates and walks in the park. I whisper sweet hums to you each night with 30 second hugs and butterfly kisses. I whisper it to you each night by saying you are beautiful. You laugh roughly, for you know murder of crows can never lie. Humans can always lie, you say. You can always lie, you say. When there's no one to wake you with tender embrace, think of nature and its unrelenting hostility. Let earth softly wake you. Maybe one day those thoughts can go by from here, from here, from here, our bed. And as we watch the murder of crows gossip with the trees, we laugh roughly, waking up on our own for the first time in years. The sun sings how proud she is. I love you, I say. I lie. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Ezra. You just look good. I'm like a big fan. This is like a big moment for me. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.